Welcome to Live at Five, everybody. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And we have a very exciting guest. Yes. We have the sexiest song and dance man alive, who's also a TV star, the very Ooh. talented Vincent Rodriguez III Ooh. from Ooh. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. We're all big fans of that show, so that's fun. So welcome, Vincent, and welcome you guys. But first, we have some news. We sure do. So as you guys all know, there's going to be a live action version of The Little Mermaid. And Rob Marshall is in talks to direct it. The Rob Marshall. The Rob Marshall, six-time Tony nominee, Oscar nominee for the film adaptation of Chicago. Uh, he's talking to Disney about getting on board with this project. And that would be amazing because he did Into the Woods as well, the Into the Woods film. He uh, knows how to do this sort of thing. Yeah. That's so exciting. It is exciting. And the Little Mermaid film is going to feature new music by Alan Menken and Lin-Manuel Miranda. Wow. Yes. What a powerhouse duo that is. Indeed. So this is exciting. So the, if y everyone who, well, not everyone, but most people who are in the theater business have a teacher somewhere that inspire them, and submissions are now open for the Tony the Theater Education Award. So you can, you can nominate someone that, that taught you. It's uh, for it's open now through February 16th, and submissions are accepted online, K through 12 theater educators. Isn't this amazing? Ooh, that is amazing. Uh, they have to be an accredited institution, a recognized community theater organization. I don't know what that means, recognized, but I'm sure you can find all that online. And they have an ambassador this year, which is Zachary Quinto. It's a good choice. It's great. So yeah. go to Broadway.com, and you can see the link to everything if you want to nominate your teacher. Yes, and I love it. And maybe they'll be you know, an award-winning teacher after that. That's really exciting. Yes. So Tony winner Ruthie Ann Miles and stage vet George Salazar have signed on for the Christmas benefit for artists striving to end poverty, ASEP. Uh, that's going to be happening on December 11th at 7 p.m. at Joe's Pub. And the concert is going to feature Broadway talent singing pop, soul, and R&B takes on classic holiday songs. So that should be a lot of fun. Some good voices there. Yes, Ruthie and George. Okay, you ready for some sad news? This is a, this is mm. a little upsetting, but we're just gonna we're gonna get through it. We have two deaths to report, and I'm sorry to say that, but Eric Conklin and Steve Elmore have both died. Now let me explain who they are in case you don't know. But these are important to mention. Um, Eric Conklin was a director, and he worked with his longtime friend. Harvey Fierstein, and he directed these three plays. See, see if this rings a bell for you. International Stud, Fugue in a Nursery, uh, in a nursery and Widows and Children First. Now, if you know anything about Harvey Fierstein, you know that that became Tor Song Trilogy. Those were the three plays that became Tor Song Trilogy. So we're sad about that. And then Steve Elmore originated the role of Paul in Company and was also seen on Broadway. So he did a lot of Broadway, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Jenny, Fade Out, Fade In. Uh, Kelly, Nash at Nine, Chicago, the original Chicago, 42nd Street, and Anything Goes. So we're sad about those yes. those uh, theater deaths. Yes. Yeah. Um, sad news there. R.I.P. So speaking of Lin Manuel Miranda, who I mentioned a few minutes ago, he appeared on Ellen DeGeneres' show with Ellen's seven year old presidential expert, Macy Hensley. This is an adorable y yes, video. To do a three minute rendition of Hamilton. So this is on the site. Sober. It's absolutely adorable. You have to check it out. It's funny. Yeah, it's very, very funny. funny. And the kid yeah. does a great job. Get She's the high five. Great. Yes. Uh, we have Stephen Pasquale on show people. Stephen Pasquale, of course, is the star of Junk at Lincoln Center. And he talks all about starring in that financial thriller. And he also yeah. talks about getting married to Philippa Sue, who's starring right now in The Parisian Woman. Yes. Good like stuff. that. Also on the site, uh, we have photos from the 21st anniversary celebration of Chicago on Broadway, which was last night. Uh, photos of Tina Fey being honored at the New York Stage and Film Gala last night as well. And we have the new Broadway Across America report uh, featuring the tours of Phantom of the Opera, On Your Feet, and Waitress. So check that out as well. Lots of good stuff, but yes. m maybe more importantly, maybe, maybe middle, yes, definitely more importantly, Vincent Rodriguez the third, Vinny, is in the house, and we will be right back with him. On the outside, always looking in, will I ever be more than I've always been? Cause I'm tap, tap, tapping on the glass, I'm waving through a window. These artists will come together for only one thing. It's not a concert. It's not an award show. It's SpongeBob the Musical on Broadway. Broadway. 
Sideways Come From Away is a best musical winner all across North America. This stirring and inspiring musical takes you to a place you never want to leave. Celebrate the best of humankind and the best in all of us at Come From Away, the remarkable true story of the small town that welcomed the world. know how I'm still standing. if only life were as easy as pie waitress is a hit raves the new york times with songs by grammy nominated artist sarah Bareilles, an uplifting celebration of love and laughter sugar butter flour welcome back to live at five and i'm thrilled to welcome vincent rodriguez iii from crazy ex-girlfriend are you, are you gonna clap? <laughs> yes, I just said you're gonna clap. Welcome, Vinny. How are Hi. you? Thanks, Beth. Thanks for having me. We are thrilled to have you. Tell me how it's been going now that you've been in New York for a little while this week. Oh gosh, New York. This trip has been wild and crazy. Uh, I was just gonna kind of join my husband for a little work trip, and it became a. I had one press day, and now I've had five press days. So we it's all want to talk to you. <laughs> we all want to talk to you. And and by the way, we have a very international. Uh, group of people yeah, watching today. We have that. Switzerland and the Philippines and Yay, Rio de Philippines. Janeiro. Como esta Mabuhay. <laughs> They're going to love that. They're <laughs> I hope so. Let's see if they respond to that one. So tell me what's going on in season three of Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Well, a lot's happening. Um, so Josh, uh, Josh Chan must die. That's how we left season two. So uh, the, uh, Rebecca and her and her girl power friends are, are, are female Female Rebecca, Rebecca. who's played by Rachel Bloom. Re played by Rachel Bloom. Um, she, they, they're out for revenge against me and making my life You're horrible. You're so cute. How could anyone want revenge against uh, you? Well, because... I wish well, <laughs> let's go and get into it. Why? Josh, <laughs> Josh just made a really big boo-boo in season two, and... Um, so did Rebecca, but uh, but this but the way we leave we, we start season three is, is Josh is trying to run away from his problems, um, basically, and uh, run away from in a very musical way. Though. In a very musical way, he, <laughs> he joins in a very Gene Kelly way. in a very Gene Kelly way. He <laughs> joins the priest. He tries to join the priesthood. Realizes mm. it's not really for him, and tries to find his purpose. And uh, last week uh, we we had an episode named Josh is irrelevant, in which that you were not in. Is that right? No, I was. I oh, was, was in it. Was that the one you were in? I was there in was it. One that you were not in. Yeah, there was one. That was the, the first episode oh, okay. because Josh Chan was not in the episode. However, I was in the episode. I see. There's a character in it named Colin, not from not from this this country. And they, uh, Aline, I remember messaged me weeks before and said, "How's your British accent?" I said, "It's not bad. I could <laughs> brush it up." She's like, "Great, you're playing Colin." And I'm like, okay, who is Colin? <laughs> What's going uh, on? You'll find out. And I'm like, great. <laughs> so for two weeks, I, I trained uh, via Skype with a, with a buddy, with a friend of a friend. Brushing um, it up. Uh, brushing it up, yeah, with a dialect coach, an amazing actor. Um, so that, w that was cool. His name's Giles. Giles. Giles so Josh is up. running away, away from his problems. <laughs> yeah, and, and trying to figure himself out. So this Friday, if you, um, for those of you tuning in, it's going to be the first episode that does not have Josh's name in the title. It's a very, it's a very pivotal episode. So that's Josh that's is. That's a lot of episodes with Josh's name. In yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> Eight, 18 season one, 13 season two, and 13 uh, uh, season three. But we're on like episode six or seven now. So, um, so yeah. So this episode, Josh is trying to figure out his life, be an adult. Um, this has already been spoiled. So Josh uh, tries bartending, and uh, always up for a new skill, huh? Yeah, and he <laughs> thinks that uh, he thinks that being like Tom Cruise, a la cocktail, is is. Is is the way to be a bartender? Not the case. Um, <laughs> but that did was. Did you have to throw bottles up in the I air? I did. 
How did I that did. go? It went very well. I, ch I, I, got, I was notified weeks ahead of time. I found out. To brush up your British accent. You've got to brush up your throwing bottles in the yeah, air. Yeah, they, <laughs> they uh, uh, like last season, the after season, in the middle of season one, we got an email from the writer's room saying, please list all your special skills and, and send wow. them to us. So I, I sent them. No lying on that one. And that means they really want to look at them and They want to use them, and yeah. they have. So every single, um, uh, uh, we, we've, we haven't run out. There's a few of my special skills that have not been oh, seen on camera a, what yet. What else? Uh, my magic skills have not been seen on camera yet. Uh, it's not going to be like I has a driver's license. It's not going to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> not, not not quite. Or like has has a U.S. passport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, barbershop singing. Uh, I sing a cappella, and but um, we've seen a lot of them. We've seen you tap dance. You've seen me tap dance. Uh, you and you will see me sp uh, spin bottles. You'll see, you've seen me bartend, which is a survival job I had for many years. Um, so I had to pick that up, learn that. Um, they gave me a little time, and then uh, this has also been spoiled. But in the new year, there's an episode where Josh is gonna just be in his underwear. Being this sounds like one of your special skills. Being a actually. dancer. I was a go-go go boy. <laughs> I, you were go -go I was a go-go go boy. I did it in <laughs> Chicago. I did it in Provincetown. It's something I did. Uh, I think Channing Tatum has also been, a, a, you know, a dancer. So it's it, 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 I, it's it's real. Still, it I happened. Your I did it. You still have the suspenders and the your dance. Yeah, band. I just posted <laughs> that one. Well, yeah, my trainer um, Eric uh, is is you know being very supportive of my transformation. I lost 27 pounds in like mm -hmm. 12 weeks, and I was getting a, a photo shoot with Gregory Zabilski in L.A. And he was like, "You need to take one in honor of your title." From That's People right. Magazine's sexiest, sexiest Man Alive issue, sexiest, sexiest song and dance yeah. man. That's a good one. So he was. He, I think he said you should be in your underwear and boots and be holding a top hat and cane. And I thought I don't have boots. <laughs> I don't want to be in my underwear. I'll split the difference. So I took out the blue suspenders and the gray and the gray slacks that I had oh, worn. Those were your audition pants. Those were my audition pants. I wore a I wore a Millie Fairly Modern Millie first national tour, which I booked. Yes. I turned it down to do Irving Berlin's White Christmas original cast. Right. At the Curran the Theater. Tour, yeah. uh, no, uh, oh, not the tour, yeah. Not the tour, the sit down. At the, at the at San the Francisco, San Francisco right. the Curran, my hometown, uh, which during the run, I worked across the street from the stage door at Starbucks you three days this. a week. You know what? You got to do what you got to <laughs> do, people. This is a hard business. <laughs> well, blocks away, I used to work at the Starbucks on 4th and Market, and that was around the time I was training at the Youth Conservatory at ACT before I even got into PCPA, which is the training program I went through, mm -hmm. which kind of helped train me before I, I did the first national tour of 42nd it's Street. It's humbling, humbling. It's very humbling. I, I, and when I you were in New York, did you also work at Starbucks? Uh, no, I couldn't quite make that work, even though I knew people who managed Starbucks's, and I spent a lot of time at Starbucks just hanging out as, as a person, as an actor, and nursing those Waiting venties. Waiting for the next audition. <laughs> I mean, basically, 60-pound duffel bag, 15 pounds. What was in that duffel bag? Everything, because I s had to take you would just come into Manhattan three, and do whatever. Three modes of transportation to get in yeah. when I first got here, because I didn't know anybody. Uh, anybody. So it was, it, was, it was really hard. I mean, um, if I sound like a broken record when I talk about it, I, I like talking about it, because I don't want people to think, like, this just happened you overnight. You just booked a TV show and no, magic. No, not at all. Not you have at to all. earn these special skills somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Spent a lot <laughs> of time alone. Beyond your training, I mean, you, you were in New York for a long time, pounding eleven. Pavement. I think 11. I counted at 11. So I got here in 2004 after the first national tour of 42nd Street during that special agreement pink contract mm -hmm. where you got paid like 500 something a week so I was happy I was so happy because uh, <laughs> I had because compared to what to compared to zero dollars I was right, getting right, at school right. um, getting uh, I wasn't getting paid to perform in school and um, and yeah and then I just kept auditioning and then my first job after that was three months of auditioning in New York that big duffel bag yes. and then Irving Berlin's White Christmas which is a big show huge big show I was on show. I was on the cast recording I got to dance with for Randy Skinner and work with Walter Bobby, director of Chicago, right. who just did Bright Star mm -hmm. at the Amundsen and on Broadway. I mean, and it's a big dance show, so you really got to show huge off. dance show. Oh my gosh, it was it was so fulfilling to be in the ensemble of Irving Berlin's White Christmas. It's one of the highlights of my of my my career and as Randy a dancer. Skinner's like old school choreography. That's really my bread and seems to be what you love. It's what I love, and that was a huge treat. So if Randy, you're listening, like thank you for that gift. It was. <laughs> it was it was an ultimate gift. And then I got to share it on the show by doing that Gene Kelly number, I've Got My Head in the Clouds, mm -hmm. which I got to assistant choreograph Catherine Burns, who won an Emmy for our Amazing. show. 
it's best a great choreography. number. It's very funny. I was so flattered. I mean, I and it's, it, uh, it's very old Hollywood, yeah. really. Oh, oh, very. I mean, we took it. Tap dancing it's singing in the rain. So yeah, singing in the rain, exactly. We, you know, I did the with the hilarious lyrics. The pose, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. God is your easy pass. Is God, that one, is that God's what my easy pass. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it was really fun, and Rachel gave it, I, I mean, I feel like it's a really warm and sweet gift from Rachel Bloom, who wrote it with her writing team, Jack Dolgen and Adam Schlesinger, um, and it really was just Josh, it, Josh it thinks being a priest is going to solve his problems, and it's awesome, so what if he was in a church, and he, and this is just his kind of thesis statement of what, mm. what that would be like, and, um, you know, got the song, I thought it was funny, got to help choreograph it, thought that was really fun and, and so artistically fulfilling to be a part of the creative process and of this kind of show. And they are tailoring the, sh the show constantly to your skills. I mean, y yes and no. I mean, I, if anything, they're, they're using the or skills using to the help skills. The, the story. And, and my whole career, my whole lead up to having this career was this voice in my head saying, you have to be able to do all these things if you want to work with Patti LuPone, Tova Felch, all the you know these these people who have been on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend that yeah. I've gotten to work with. The Broadway you icons. The Broadway icons. If you want to work with these Broadway people, you got to be able to do this stuff. So that's what I thought for the longest time. So I kept embracing my hobbies and embracing the idea of learning something new mm -hmm. and learning something that I had seen some other classic iconic theater performer doing. Mm -hmm. So I was learning instruments because I thought I had to play instruments. I was learning magic. I was just constantly adding throwing to my list. Liquor bottles up in Throwing the liquor head. bottles. Which Whatever is you need to do. Which is like <laughs> which is like twirling. So I was a drum major in high school. There you go. Rifle twirler and I twirled flags and Camelot. I've done been a ma I was a magic consultant. You, what I love about you is that your background is total musical theater nerd. And total. I I'm a huge nerd. You guys I'm a nerd. Sorry. That's what I like about you. I'm a nerd. You're one of us. I'm one of you. <laughs> I'm one of you. What is that from? I made that up. Usually I pull the quote from a musical. It's okay. And as, I'm, as long and as you sing to us, we don't care and what And I have do. relative pitch, so <laughs> I'll, it'll be in that key. It's around there. It's good. I like yeah. it. I like it. We're going to take some <laughs> questions from Let's our do it. Facebook Live people. Hello hey, from live. Latvia. What's we, going on? Very international group Hello. of people here today. Okay, Marianne <laughs> has a very important question. Are you ready? Marianne? Marianne. Let's hit it. Let's do it. What did Josh do with the puppy at the end of the last episode? <laughs> because I don't think Josh can take care of himself, no. let alone a puppy. Thank you, Marianne. That's a really good <laughs> question. Things you don't know. That would have been made a good tag. <laughs> Josh just holds the puppy like, I don't know. I can't take care of it. And like, he just like, here, you stay right here. Turns around. Car hits it. No, I'm just kidding. This um, is your fantasy. This is not what happened. Penny. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. I don't know. But Penny... Dog's name was Penny. She was lovely to work with. She was so cute. We got plenty of selfies with her. Um, but I have no idea what Josh did with that dog. Returned it. Returned oh, it. It's a sad moment for Josh. Josh is going through it. I, I also should say that this he's not, show. He's not done either. I he's mean, not he's going to. It's good. The drama is going to keep flowing the and rest the, of season the three. It feels like Rachel's really put the emphasis on the crazy of crazy ex-girlfriend. Yes. Season. This is. In a this serious is the way, season. not in a jokey way. Well, did you hear like this is the season that is the is the thesis is the title. Like this is where we actually honor the title of the show. Yeah. Crazy ex-girlfriend. Um, we use those words this it's season. It's not flippant this time. No, no, it's not. It, it's it's everything we've been doing has been leading up to this, this season. This is all planned out, right? This it feels like Breaking Bad. Yeah, yeah. They took the Breaking this Bad model. There's a blueprint somewhere. There's in a secret. It was it was yeah. a blue it was a blueprint when they when they uh, when I got the role they uh, we had a Skype meeting and they told me what was going to happen in every season up until five seasons and I really? freaked out every time they told <gasps> me the finale. You know so everything. So they're not making it up as they go along. No, we are Just not. No. And then after the first season, it was like okay, five seasons became four. So now we. Know, have it plotted out for four, mm -hmm. and so like we just wrapped season three. I know how season three ends. It's awesome. It's amazing. Tell us um, the secret. Ah, I can't. I can't. I can't. Um, We're gonna torture you later. But okay. but I but I will say, uh, you know, um, a lot hits the fan this season. We go to uh, for those who've been watching, we go to a darker place. Yeah. But but just like true true to our show, we don't. But they still break into song. We break into song. It's 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 a it's a it's a pill you can swallow. It's a really mm -hmm. disgusting, grotesque pill. You're at selling times us on it, really. That, that we Thanks. can't. Well, it's. I mean, <laughs> it's disgusting. But it's they disgusting, sing. But we sing. And there's tap dancing. There's tap dancing. <laughs> Sweeney. Um, 
Oh, I'm sorry. It's sweet. It's usually that or something. Uh, so no, but but that that's what's great about comedy. There's always drama behind it. And in our show, we break television tropes and yes. we talk about the things that are uncomfortable to talk about. We're like, why do in I? In an expert way, not in oh a, yeah, not in a writers think this is what it should be. In yeah. like, let's actually go to the experts and find out what the reality is and then use that. One hundred percent. That writers room is amazing. They're meticulous. They're smart. The drafts we they get do their research, in constant. Yeah all the time yeah. and Rachel loves musicals so anything any anytime we uh, we were building into a number that's a very important moment for Rachel because it had the, the the beginning of the music has to get earned it has to be used a certain way the device has to be set up mm -hmm. just like in any other musical where you have to make sure the song pushes the plot you know so she wants to come to Broadway and she <sighs> wants to write something I she know. says this all the time it's gonna be amazing and I will I be, in the, front row. <laughs> be in the front row I'm just saying um, <laughs> So aside from the puppy, what else do they want to know? Joanna <laughs> wants to know who on the show would you like to have a duet with? Okay, so I've had a duet with Rachel. Yeah. I've had uh, without giving the rest of season three away. Oh, here we go with the secrets. Okay. Okay, it's fine. No, you know, and we don't know, and you can who pull that I over. I see. I've already tap danced, so so this probably won't happen. I want to do a tap number with Donald and Trample. Or Speaking at least a Tom. dance number because she's an amazing dancer, yeah. uh, Donna Lynn. And I saw her in Sweeney, didn't recognize her. She has an amazing voice. She can do everything with her voice. Yeah. She She's a delight. And whenever I work with her, I always feel like I'm working with this Broadway energy. Mm, that's interesting. It's sharp. It's there. It's live. It's, present, it's nuanced. Yeah. It's present. And, you know, I, I'm working with my heroes right now on the show. The, you know, like Vela Lavelle who plays Heather, Gabriel Ruiz who plays, who, who, um, who plays Valencia. Who is also here. David Hull, fun. Broadway vet, yeah. who plays White Josh. Uh, <laughs> Eric Lopez who plays, who plays Hector. I'm a huge fan of, of, of these characters. Mm -hmm. um, th like there are no small parts on our show. Everyone is highlighted in some way. Um, Kevin, who uh, played by Johnny, Johnny Ray Meeks, just they have such great parts and we're working with like an improv legend pete gardner like he's taught some big stars in his time as a as an improv teacher and and he's but an, an amazing improviser and that's what he's known for so i get to work with these people and i just i really look up to them so it's an honor to to be among them so i feel like every time i'm bringing a special skill or i'm in scenes with them i'm i'm just trying to match and and be a part of their world Oh, yeah, he did it. He went there. He said that. He said it. Say it again. He said it. Part of your... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, I hope laugh. you all caught that. Um, <laughs> we all have a question, which is, what's your Broadway dream role? You know, I so I have two, I, I, and it's a toss-up, because one is way more contemporary and probably... You can have two. You can be on Broadway more than once. It's okay. Well... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so it used to be like Gene Kelly and Singing in the Rain, mm -hmm. which is a great, which is a fun role. But, th but really, I think one that would be be more co cohesive in terms and more spread out in terms of to do list on the mm -hmm. show is Bobby Child and Singing in the Rain. Wow. I, wait, did I just do that? What? So I haven't had a coffee, and because I can't five twenty four blasphemy. Yes, go on. Say mm -hmm. that again. We're gonna do a little take two. Just take two. Can we just get him? Mm -hmm. And are we are we rolling? <laughs> And action. So my dream role would probably have to be um, Don Lockwood in Crazy for You. Son of a! <laughs> um, no, something's crossing. Something's, something's happening. Going. No, uh, so yeah, the Bobby Child in Crazy for You because I did that show in college, and I'm a huge fan of um, G uh, keep Jen on talking Walton. about bringing it back. I'm just saying. they should. And then and then I, I ran into Walter Bobby today, and I was like, oh my As you gosh, do, you run into Walter Bobby. <laughs> I ran into Walter Bobby, <laughs> um, and I was just we were ha rehashing Wal White Christmas, and you know, like I like I said, I'm a huge fan of these shows. Yeah. They they mean so much to me, and I really poured my life into them. Um, this is before I got married, where I had way more time on my hands. Um, Spouses, they take up time. Greg, you take <laughs> up a lot of time. <laughs> Love you, boo. <laughs> um, I'm like, he's like working somewhere. Um, but uh, but yeah, White Christmas was, was just such a huge part of my life. I mm -hmm. worked with amazing people. And like, I remember just staring at best things. Best things happen while you're dancing, the Phil Davis mm -hmm, role, mm -hmm. watching Jeffrey Denman. Just is it just a 
Dream dancer. Dream dancer. And listening to my, one of my inspirations in musical theater, Brian Darcy James, yeah. who has superseded the Broadway stage and gone on to TV and film, and I'm just... He'll be back. He'll, 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 he'll be there? back. <laughs> Soon we'll see. Okay, nice um, what, King George? <laughs> Vinny, you're not white. <laughs> No, I am not. Uh, no, I'd rather play <laughs> Hamilton. I don't need to be here, which is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I just, so I mean, I would so love to play Hilda. You want to do Hilda. kind of a classic show. I want to do, your classic score. I want to play a song and dance, man. You know, it's yeah. something I've always wanted to do on the show, which is why when Rachel gave me I've Got My Head in the Clouds yeah. and I got the assistant choreograph it, it was a huge dream. And in that episode, I got to also chore cho um, assistant choreograph one of my favorite styles of dance, Fosse. We did, um, I helped yeah. with, strip away your conscience mm -hmm. and really using that fos fossey vocabulary and then finding the funny in it and moments where we could really isolate and give the waterfall hands look and you just do that with your wrists and your shoulders yeah or like you know on. anytime we can add subtlety or like we couldn't find steam heat is quite happening the right next to me it's amazing well steam heat <laughs> was what i modeled that <laughs> photo on, Insta on instagram <laughs> oh, that's right that was everything because like of the hat because of the hat because yeah. anytime you give me a hat i think steam heat and i think oh the steam heats Christmas. are bowlers aren't they there are bowlers I which is why i wanted to, to chat fact check Ni nice beth you're welcome it was pork a pork pie, pie. I, I know i know you're beth still. and i are zzz, We're whenever real. i told you you're one of us i'm musical theater <laughs> nerds <laughs> yeah. what if god was one of us uh, i didn't want yeah yeah that's not oh so sorry uh, i'm so sorry <laughs> where am i so we have more questions from our <laughs> viewers <laughs> All right. But tell Hit us about me. Here Lies Love. Tell us, tell you about it. Talk about highlight of my career. That was a dream. That could come to the Broadway I, sometime. I, I mean, that would be cool. I would love it if Here Lies Love came to L.A. and had a, had, had a company there. It was a really I large... I mean, or just anywhere, because just, it was a great show. It was an amazing show. I wish more people saw it. Um, that's the show I was doing when I booked... Uh, when I got the audition for Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Uh, and ironically, one of our executive producers, Mark Webb, who directed our, pi our, our episode one of both seasons one and two, mm -hmm. he, he saw the show and someone said, oh my gosh, the director from the Sp new Spider-Man franchise is in the audience. And I'm like, okay, cool. And then <laughs> and they told me that after the show. And uh, so I looked up what he looked like and I went, oh yeah, I saw that guy. I sang to him at the end of the show because I was playing <laughs> the DJ at the it. time. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even realize it. Which felt is, his vibe. I felt his vibe. Here Lies Love was amazing. I'm working with working for David Byrne and Alex Timbers. Oh, it's uh, a great score. It's a great score. I mean, Ruth. And a really inventive direction. Ruthie Ann Miles, oh my God. Ruthie Ann Miles as Imelda. I met her during a workshop uh, months prior to the, the Here Lies Love 2.0. Mm -hmm. And she was like, I think you'd be great as the as the cover for for the two roles opposite me i'm like for for conrad Ricamora's role right. and jose lana's like, role yes please i'm like i would love <laughs> to audition so i did and i got it and i got to go um and then i think two weeks in uh i sang child of the philippines conrad song and conrad's on had to get away with murder as if we didn't know that Come and on. just killing it i'm like so yes good. diversity in television and jose's <laughs> doing an amazing job on the tour of king and i i got to see him at the oh that's great at the pantages yeah. so i'm just so ha i'm really happy for them they're doing so well and then ruthie's like and she has, she has a tony award nbd um <laughs> It's like, what is happening in the world? <laughs> it's like Asians unite. Yes, pride, <laughs> Pinoy pride. Um, it was. I got to go on for um, for Conrad because he was doing How to Get Away with Murder. Mm -hmm. But after the first two weeks of rehearsal, Alex pulled me aside and said, um, "We would like you to take over the role of the DJ while Kelvin Moonlow goes away to do sideshow at, and now he's at in Kennedy SpongeBob. Center." And now he's in SpongeBob, and I'm seeing him tonight. That's Break awesome. legs, That's awesome. Kelvin and John Rua. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my buds. I'm so excited to see this show. I've heard so, such Sounds wonderful things. Sounds like that things. show was really meaningful to you then, Here Lies Love. Here Lies Love really was, and I got to work with uh, an, an all you know Filipino Asian cast. Mm -hmm. It was, we were like a family, and yeah. we ate a lot of Filipino food. And that's important. Very important. <laughs> um, it was, it was, let's just, let's just put it this way. Um, for those of you in the theater community, you would know this, but let me explain it to those who aren't. So on, on your Sunday night before your day off, you all go home right. or you go out to for a drink because you have the day off the next day well our son our our so that's like a you know we call it our your friday night your friday night is sunday right, night. the beginning of your weekend beginning of your weekend so the beginning of our weekend i th was i was saturday night so we were dark on sundays for a period of time I don't, I don't know if i'm remembering this correctly um and if i'm not sorry guys but instead of going out we would bring booze and food and we would hang out in the green room <laughs> and just, just didn't want us to leave party. work. Party. <laughs> just like live our lives. <laughs> Kelvin Winlow, 
How many dresses have you made out of nothing? How, how many made? Oh, the secrets are being revealed. How many I wigs did we <laughs> throw around that dressing room? You music theater people, you know what I'm talking. You know, <laughs> you know. Wig parties, uh, <laughs> so fun. So just so I'd mix, tr I'd mix cocktails, mix drinks. We'd That's bring. That's where you got your special skill. <laughs> <laughs> I'd already been doing that, but I was like, "Oh, I'm bring cocktails. I'm gonna bring Jello shots." And then, and then, so, and also, our, 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 the, ca the, the show. You have blackmail drunken stories on people, and I love that about you. <laughs> oh my That's god, amazing. That's not quite. I wasn't gonna go there. That isn't where you're going. I just took you there. It's okay. <laughs> um, no, but what was cool was that. Uh, so our show in, in Here Lies Love. It takes place in a disco, and it's Millennium. Right. It's called Millennium. But at one point, we say in the script, it was like, "Welcome to Club Millennium." But we changed it from Club Millennium to just Millennium, mm -hmm. so because we didn't want it in the script, we didn't want it called that. So what I did was I found an old sign that said Club Millennium on it, and I took it and I put it on our dressing room. This uh -oh. is the dressing room I shared with the other swings and Kelvin, <laughs> and <laughs> um, I made the dressing room into a mini millennium so i got pink tape i've copied the set design <laughs> i got lights that ch led lights that you changed married back then, a you? laser you, you had a lot more time i was oh you were back then hi babe <laughs> i was you were like i don't have time now it was oh all God. on amazon and so i i did so i like oh, you just online shop online shop <laughs> set designed and like came in early one day like judged the the you f out of, i judged the f <laughs> out of that thing and then so when you came in like <laughs> double clap and like <laughs> lasers would turn on single other lights, come on. I um, hope you come to Broadway because I'm going to come backstage and hang out in your It would be room. so fun. <laughs> if your lot of stuff came to Broadway, I'd be like, um, please let me be in it and please come to my dressing room <laughs> and let's have a drink and let's have a kiki. Let's I love it. A a ki well, well, in the zhuzh up. Wait, I love these words we're using. In the zhuzh. It was in the zhuzh. So that was your lies love. <laughs> in a nutshell. It was I have awesome. so many more questions to ask you. <laughs> There's so many questions. We have to go, but I want to oh. ask you one more. Okay. If you could have anyone guest star on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, anyone, especially from the world of Broadway. Ooh. And yeah. I know you've already had the icons on. I know. We, we've, I mean, yeah, we've had a few, so that's that. That's tough. That that visionary board has not been developed because mm -hmm. we've been just living the dream. I mean, yeah. we had Josh Groban on, yeah. and he belted out a number and then sang his name. <laughs> he he belt, belted his own name. <laughs> Mic drop. I mean, you don't. <laughs> s sorry. I mean, unless you get Patty Lapone to say like Patty Lapone, unless you get her to do that. I don't know. I mean. <gasps> Bernadette Peters. How dare you okay. say that out loud? Rachel. Gas. There's a gas. Bernadette. Bernadette mm -hmm. Peters, ladies and gentlemen. We need the original witch from Into the Woods. Among other roles. <laughs> start. Start it. Among amongst <laughs> the few other ones. One or two. Let's start that campaign, you guys. Get on it. Someone mm -hmm. hashtag loop insta chat snap do to have the young people do it. <coughs> She'd be a great therapist. What? Who? Crazy ex girlfriend, Bernadette. <gasps> that would be a so She just brings a certain level of calm. <laughs> on that note, that would be good. I don't know what note that was, but on that note. <laughs> on that note, that was a D. <laughs> on that note, that note was a D. I'm just kidding. Such for that ski. Don't quote me on this. <laughs> don't look, don't listen to my vibrato. Just kidding, do. You guys, <laughs> you have to watch Crazy Ex-Girlfriend, which is on Fridays. Yeah. Fridays at 8 o'clock. On yeah. CW. Yeah. And just follow this guy on Instagram because there's a lot to see. Follow me. And we will see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.